Okay, so now we're in podcast 4.2 and we're going to be talking about this thing called the mole. And now this is not a mole like the animal, the picture mole, but this is the scientific standard measurement, the mole. And this is uh, the most important concept you are going to learn this year because this carries into every other chapter we are going to do and every other calculation you are going to do the rest of the year. So this is the skill, if I had to pick one, the one that you really need to spend the most time on and making sure you understand. So let's take a look at it. The first thing we want to talk about is why do we use moles? What is the point of this thing called the mole? Sometimes mass isn't helpful, and that's because mass can be deceptive. And we're gonna here's an example for that. So if let's say I have a sample of elephants, if I work in a zoo or something, so I have a sample of elephants and I have a sample of pens in my office. I am a zookeeper. If I were to weigh my elephants, I would have 24,000 kilograms of elephant. If I were to weigh my pens, let's say I had 24 grams of pens. If I were to ask you, what do I have more of? Well, obviously, a lot of you would say, well, we've got more elephant because, look, I've got 24,000 kilograms of elephant. There's more um, pieces of stuff there than the pen just because I've got way, way more mass. Well, if I were to tell you that each elephant was 2,000 kilos and each pen was 2 grams, well, then we could turn this into a number, just like when we looked at water molecules. Well, if I were to divide these two, I would say, well, oh, I've only got 12 elephants here. If I were to divide this, I'd say, well, I've got 12 pencils too. I have the same number of pencils as I do elephants. This is the concept of the mole. The mole calculates a quantity of things. It's an amount of things. It doesn't have anything to do with the mass because the mass can change depending on the type of matter. So... Again, the mole quantifies a number of objects much like a dozen does. So one dozen is 12 of anything. There's no reason I can't have a dozen uh, eggs, I can have a dozen pencils, I can have a dozen people, I can have a dozen anything. It doesn't matter. It's, it's a standard set quantity of things. One mole is very much the same. The quantity of a mole is 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 and in chemistry we're going to be talking these are atoms or molecules but they could also be anything it doesn't matter what our substance is it doesn't matter what type of matter we have I can have a mole of soda cans I can have a mole of sand I could have a mole of hair I could have a mole of anything I want because a mole is always this number 6.02 times 10 to the 23 pieces of anything. It's a quantity. It's a number of objects. Uh, this is 6.02 or it's a 602 followed by 21 zeros. I'm 22 or 23 place values to the right. So 602, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And then fill in your place values. 3, 3, Three, 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 three. So hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, trillions, uh, quadrillions, pentillions, sextillions. This is 602 sextillion pieces of anything. And there's a quote in your notes uh, from a chapter of a book called A Short History of Nearly Everything, and it kind of describes what this quantity is. And you're going to be doing a lab trying to describe this quantity. So this is a huge number. It is so gigantic. We're only going to be using it in chemistry just because it is so uh, impossibly large. It's just impossible to wrap your head around anything that could have that quantity. But in chemistry, it's really going to be, you're going to see how many atoms, so if we're talking about atoms, this really isn't that much stuff when we when we start talking about atomic level. So um, this number needs to be saved in your head. Okay, this one mole eats exactly 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles pieces of anything. We're going to be using dimensional analysis a lot again. So this, remember, this is conversions, unit conversions. Okay. I like to use parentheses. Another way to do it, so if I say we're going to be going from grams to moles, we could either go back to grams or we could go from moles to particles. This would be like atoms, 
molecules, whatever. We can go from moles to volume. So you can see that moles are the hub of all the calculations that we're going to be doing from now on. So dimensional analysis is going to be converting from a gram to a mole value back to a gram or to a volume or to a particle value. We're going to look at a lot of examples on how to do this and there's a lot of practice in your, in your packet on how to do this and how to actually run this skill. Uh, so example two, example one was the whole elephant pencil thing. Example two, how many moles is 16.2 grams of carbon? So the first thing we need to look at, one mole of any element is equal to its atomic mass number, atomic mass in grams. Okay, so carbon equals 12.01 atomic mass units. That's straight off the periodic table. Because we're 12.1 atomic mass units, one mole of carbon is also equal to 12.01 grams of carbon. This is true for any, any atom on the periodic table. So if I asked for a mole of hydrogen, that would equal 1.01 .01 grams of hydrogen. So we can go straight from moles to grams to get this uh, the, our starting value. So that these are our conversion factors, right? So if one mole of hydrogen equals 1.01 .01 grams of hydrogen, I can set that up in a ratio. And the trick to doing this is we need to fill in our units before we fill in the numbers to make sure that everything gets into the right spot. So I'm starting with grams of carbon. I want to convert that into moles of carbon. So I want to do some kind of calculation that ends that gives me a, a mole unit value in the end. If I'm looking at this ratio, remember anything on its own can be placed over one. So this gram is in the numerator and that means that I need to have a gram in the denominator to cancel it out. And then that uh, moles go on top. We're always setting things equal to one of something. I don't want to know one gram because my conversion factor isn't for one gram, especially looking at the carbon here. This tells me that 12.01 grams of carbon is equal to one mole. This is my conversion factor because this whole unit is equal to one. I'm just changing my units. So starting with what we know or what the question gives us, it gives us 16.2 grams of carbon and we know that one mole of carbon is equal to 12.01 grams of carbon. So if you grab your calculator, you can do you can do this two ways. If you're looking at it, you can multiply by 1 over 12, or we can just divide by 12. It gives you the same answer. I like to look at it in terms of multiplication because I can see, I shouldn't have put that slash through, I'm sorry about that, because I can see how all my units are canceling out. My grams, when I'm done, are going to cancel out, giving me this mole value in the end. So we end up with 16.2 times 1 over 12.01, and that gives me the answer. 1.35 moles of carbon. Okay, Remember, you have to look at your sig figs. This is a conversion factor, so sig figs don't count here. So we need to look at what we start with. I have one, two, three significant figures. My answer needs to have one, two, three sig figs in the answer. The next thing you need to ask yourself is, does this answer make sense? Well, if I know that one mole of carbon is equal to 12.01 grams, if I start with more than 12 grams, my mole answer should be greater than 1. If I have less than 12 grams over here, my mole answer should be less than 1. So we can quick do a mental check and say, okay, does this answer make sense when I'm looking at uh, my calculation in the end, when I'm checking my work? We can also go from a mass of carbon using moles to how many atoms or how many pieces of carbon do we have. And so we need to do the same thing. We're going to be using dimensional analysis. So we need to set up a ratio. Because we're going from grams and our starting value here to atoms and our ending value, there is no direct conversion from grams to atoms because grams are based on what kind of matter we have, right? So we need to be looking at a mole value first. So we're going to convert to moles. So I'm going to cancel out grams and fill in moles. And then now that I'm in moles, I have, so mole is my carrier. Mole is my, my the 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 method I use to get to the atom value. So once I have moles, I can convert to atoms. And remember that one mole 
is equal to that 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or particles or anything. This is called Avogadro's number. And that's named after the scientist who first hypothesized a number, a set number of pieces per mass. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms will convert from a mole to an atom. So this is my next conversion. I need to do a two-step conversion here. So if, again, if we're looking at dimensional analysis, I want to cancel out moles, so those need to go on the bottom, and my atoms go on top. And then I can fill in my values. I'm starting with 16.2, so that's my initial value. We're converting from grams of carbon to moles of carbon, so we know that 12.01 grams of carbon from the periodic table is equal to one mole. So grams have now canceled. Then we can fill in our mole conversion factor to go to atoms. So this is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is equal to one mole. And now my moles have canceled and I will get an atom value in the end. So again, if you look, you can just multiply straight through or you can say, okay, I need to divide by the first one and then multiply by the second one based on where your numerator, denominator, one are, where your whole number is. Uh, I don't, again, I don't care how you do it. So let's, uh, if we do 16.2 times... 1 divided by 12.01 times, and then again in parentheses because this whole thing represents an entire value. 6.02 times 10 raised to the 23rd power. And that gives us, ran out of space up here, so we end up with our everything is equal to 8.12 times 10 to the 23. Or your calculator says 8.12, uh, lower or capital E, 23. These mean the same thing. This E means a power of 10. So when we're looking at this again, this is my final answer. This is atoms. Again, we can do a mental check and make sure this makes sense. If I know that one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd which is equal to 12 grams, I have 16 grams, so my answer should be greater than 6.02. It is greater, that answer gets a check, it makes sense. And if you've canceled all your units out, it's self-checking, remember? So all you're doing is you're just multiplying everything through. If your units cancel out to give you what you want in the end, your answer is most likely gonna be right. The reason I do this all in one step like this is to reduce rounding error. So if I multiply or if I divide 16.2 by 12 to get a mole value, I'm going to have to round that off based on sig figs. And then I would multiply that and round off again at the end. The less rounding we do, the more exact our answer is going to be. So if you want to stop here, if you want to just calculate moles and then set up another equation, that's fine. I'm not going to deduct points or anything, but we need to be able to get to the point where we can set up an entire calculation. Eventually, we're going to be doing two, three, four conversions all at once, so it's a skill that we need to build. This can be one of the most confusing topics we're talking about. Um, so I want you to set up unit ratios first, like I did. So go from grams and then cancel grams to moles and then either go from moles back to grams or cancel out your moles and go to atoms. Okay, and then fill in your numbers. Set up your roadmap first. Make sure your calculations cancel every unit. So if I'm looking at this, my grams cancel, my moles cancel, and I'll get atoms in the end. I canceled everything I wanted to. My answer is going to make sense when I'm done. You always need to check your answers. Do that quick mental check. Is Should my answer be greater than one mole, less than one mole, or equal to one mole? Uh, you know what one mole of anything in grams or particles is because it's equal. Remember, this is equal to peri periodic table mass in grams. Does your answer make sense? And then please, please, please ask me questions. If you have trouble with this, you need to ask questions. If you're not sure if your answers make sense, then ask questions and I can help you with this. This is going to take the most practice out of anything we've done so far. You need to read chapter 3.2 in the text. It walks it through step by step. I've given you uh, moles and mass, mole and Avogadro's number, and the mixed mole problems, three different worksheets, and then about 15 problems here to work on in your book. This is a skill you must have down. Uh, the labs are going to use this, and I'm going to be a stickler on this. You really need to understand what you're doing in order to get these objectives checked off. So please 
Um, put the work in, put the effort in. If you learn it now, it's going to be much easier as we go through the year. So again, ask questions in class and we'll just go from there.